Hello and welcome. My name is Betty Parsons Barker and I had the pleasure of serving as the 2022 Outstanding International Books Committee Chair. Along with dedicated readers, Allison Francis, Wendy Stevens, Isaac Larison, Desiree Cueto, Patricia Bloom, Sarah Parrish, Nancy Johnson, and our fabulous co-chair Jennifer Graff, we read over 530 books submitted by publishers from around the world. It was a pleasure discussing these outstanding books with outstanding people. Thank you all for the time, thought, and love you poured into our work this year. Here are USBBY selection criteria for the determining of OIB lists. We look at books that represent the best of children's literature from other countries and introduce readers to the outstanding international authors and illustrators who create them. These books help broaden children's horizons as they provide other points of view, perspectives, or topics that are missing from children's literature in the U.S. In addition, there are criteria for content and presentation that include artistic and literary merit and the qualities that engage and appeal to children. It is now our pleasure to introduce you to the 42 books on the 2022 OIB list. Each committee member will present one theme with several titles. We had a wonderful time discussing books that fell under multiple themes, but for the sake of this presentation, each book is highlighted only once. Enjoy! The thing about light is how it relies on darkness to appear. It can illuminate, shine as a beacon, brighten, lighten, even radiate. Set against the dark unknown, it can clarify, guide, and serve as a signal. And that's just what the five books in this category offer readers as they spotlight people in places, history, and heartache, and surrender to the quiet illumination of hope. Africa, Amazing Africa presents a delightful oversized nonfiction celebration introducing all 55 countries on the African continent. Highly browsable and no way textbookish, the lively text and exhilarating illustrations shine a light on the unique diversity that exists on the continent of Africa. Every August 6th in Hiroshima, Japan, colored lanterns are set afloat down the river, shining in the night. Soul Lanterns, translated from the Japanese, follows three middle schoolers' creation of a project for their school's art festival after the historic bombing. Inspired by the annual lantern floating ceremony, 25 years later, they honor those lost in the bombing and the children reach out to family and community, collecting and sharing stories of those lost and those left behind. Honest, heart-wrenching, eye-opening, Soul Lanterns raises questions about Hiroshima and offers an urgent appeal for peace. Bearing the Moon, a slim, illustrated novel in verse, spotlights life in rural India. With no toilets for the girls and women in the village, they wait until dark to do their business in a nearby field in danger from snakes, scorpions, disease, and assault. These feelings of frustration ignite young Latika to bury the moon that shines too bright a light on the field of shame. Exquisite language and lush illustrations tell a story of activism and reveals how lack of access to sanitation facilities affects girls and women in many parts of the world. Just imagine it's a very, very hot night in the middle of summer and the moon begins to melt. In Moon Pops, Granny seems to be the only one to notice the moon dripping into nothing. Her quick actions catching the moon drops to create icy sweet moon pops. Not only melt away the heat, they magically grow a new moon to brighten some rabbit's path home. Whimsical illustrations accompany this luminous spin on a classic Korean folktale. The star outside my window introduces Ania fascinated by astronomy and convinced that when special people die, they become shining stars in the heavens. When a new star appears and behaves unpredictably, she's certain it's her mom. Ania and her friends make it their mission to ensure that the public competition to name this amazing new star will recognize this truth. Domestic abuse, deep friendship, resilience, and madcap adventure radiate hope in this middle grade novel. Let there be light. A constant theme in children's literature 
is that of transition. And this set includes two titles that are about immigrating to a new country. My Words Flew Away Like Birds explores a young girl's emotional transition as she navigates a new home, school, and language. The beautifully illustrated Carry On, Poetry by Young Gri Immigrants, a gripping collection of poems written by high school students who immigrated to Canada, provides insight into the complexity of leaving and arriving. 189 Canaries tells the intriguing history of these birds through the story of one songbird's transition from singing in a coal mine to singing a new song across the ocean. In Comings and Goings, written by a father-daughter team, a young boy prepares to travel south to visit extended family he has not seen for a long time. This parallel story exposes the energy, excitement, and nervousness that everyone feels in the transition leading up to his arrival. Peter's dreams of becoming an archaeologist evaporate when he realizes that asthma and dust do not get along in Peter Lee's Notes from the Field. When he recognizes the deteriorating memories of his beloved grandmother, her transition from caregiver to the one needing care is quick and unsettling, as is Peter's. Transitions are a natural part of life, and these outstanding books shed light on those journeys. In the book, We Dream Medicine Dreams, author-illustrator Lisa Boyvin gives us a view into the unique relationship between a grandfather and his granddaughter. He lovingly instructs her in the ways of the natural world, sharing the wisdom he has gained through observing and cherishing animals in the wild. Bear, hawk, caribou, and wolf each have their own special gifts to share. We must be quiet observe, and listen. Have you ever wondered what is on the other side of the forest? Giants, wild beasts, who knows? Author Nadine Robert and illustrator Gerard Dubois entice us to ponder this question and imagine how we might pull an entire community together to discover what might be waiting for us there on the other side of the forest. Time. The moments in an hour, the steps of a dance, too quick to catch or dragging on forever. In Time as a Flower, Julie Morstad invites us to consider how we measure or celebrate the passing of time. In sunsets, the germination of a seed, lines on a face. Lisa Asado's All the Colors of Life encourages us to consider an array of life's particular moments and emotions. Our childhoods filled with wild discoveries, the rebellious acting out as teens, a first kiss, being blissfully in love, or celebrating a unique oneness. From birth to death, each moment a unique color of life and a universal experience. A shipping container with 28,000 yellow plastic ducks went overboard in a fierce storm. The ducks floated across the ocean to every part of the globe. Marcus Modem's Ducks Overboard, a true story of plastic in our oceans, reveals how interconnected our oceans are and invites us to consider the impact our actions have on the world. Ducks Overboard is an uncommon blend of narrative and expository text. Modem tells us a fantastical adventure from the duck's point of view and supports the story with facts about how plastic waste affects the oceans. The books in this text collection are reflective of the theme, New Beginnings. In each of the stories, the characters must find the confidence to move into a fresh chapter of life, to let go of the familiar and begin to embrace that which is not yet known. As frightening as this may be, starting over is an inevitable part of the human experience and an important global theme to unpack with children. In Wounded Falcon, written by Jairo Butrago, illustrated by Raphael Yachtang, and translated by Alyssa Amato, two seemingly different friends come together to rescue a wounded falcon. 
The Falcon's journey to healing marks a new beginning for Adrian, who comes to understand his own inner strength as he discovers the strength and beauty of birds of prey. In some cases, a new beginning is prompted by the character's dreams of living vibrantly without the burdens of their past. In the historical fiction novel Freedom Swimmer, author Wai Chim tells a story inspired by his own father's life during China's Cultural Revolution. Affected by a harsh political climate, famine, and starvation, two boys decide to swim to a new life. Starting Again After Trauma is also the focus of The Big Bad Wolf in My House, written by Valerie Fontaine, illustrated by Nathalie Dion, and translated from French by Shelley Tanaka. This powerful story depicts the way a young girl and her mother find their new beginning in a shelter for battered women. While some fresh starts are urgent and necessary, others feel forced and unsettling. The characters in some stories must find a way forward after suffering loss or unwanted family separation. In Anita and the Dragons, written by Hannah Carmona and illustrated by Anna Kuna, Anita must say goodbye to her beloved community in the Dominican Republic. In The Sour Cherry Tree, written by Nassim Harab and illustrated by Nahid Kazimi, a young girl begins again after a physical and emotional journey she and her mother take while processing the loss of her beloved Baba June. Finally, in Coffee Rabbit Snowdrop Lost, written by Bettina Burke Gere, illustrated by Anna Margareta Chirgard, and translated from Danish by Sanid Quirk Kongerskov. Stump begins a new phase of her relationship with her beloved grandfather, who is experiencing loss of words and competencies due to Alzheimer's progression. In each of these stories, new beginnings offer an opportunity to reset, refresh, and restart. The characters in this text set enter a place where anything is possible. They demonstrate for readers that each of us is always in the process of writing and rewriting the story of our lives. Picture books capture our imagination and take us to places unknown. In each of these five picture books, they help embody the theme of playful adventure. In the book, the characters find joy and play, friendship, the unknown, and the unusual. As a result, the readers of these books are invited along on these joyful explorations. In Agnes's Place by Marit Larson, illustrated by Jenny Lutville and translated by Carrie Dixon, Agnes lives in a close-knit apartment building and loves the busyness that surrounds her. When a new girl moves in, she tries to form a form connection, but realizes making friends isn't as easy as it seems. Soon they do connect in a natural way, leaving us to wonder what adventures they will go on together. Inside the Suitcase by Clotilde Perrin um, is a book about a little boy who packs his suitcase, and with each opening of the 35 flaps in the book, readers can see what he is taking on his trip and where he is going. Opening each flap to see what lies beneath brings twists and turns to the boy as he tries to find his way home. And this unknown brings an element of excitement to the book. And We All Play by Julie Flett. She illustrates both animals and children who chase, wiggle, swim, peep, and squirm. And doing all this, she's celebrating play between both the natural world and the human world. She also incorporates Cree words throughout the book, um, with, along with Cree words for wild animals in the back of the book. And The Cayman by Maria Eugenia Monrique, illustrated by Ramon Harris and translated by Amy Brill, a Venezuelan clock clockmaker adopts a baby Cayman and names him Knight and keeps him at home as a pet. The illustrator's whimsical art portrayed the joy that Knight brings to the clockmaker, the neighborhood children and all who meet him, including the author. It definitely excites imagination. And in the very last book, Molly and the Mathematical Mysteries, 10 Interactive Adventures in Mathematical Wonderland by Eugenia Chang, illustrated by Alexandra Wojtimowska. Molly, the main and only character, is a curious explorer on an adventure following mysterious mathematical clues. The vibrant interactive book encourages readers to join in on the exploration through panel, inserts and paper dial to help Molly solve the mathematical questions posed. One truth we're learning from this pandemic is the need to get our children outside and viewing our natural world with new eyes. 
The book, This Is How I Know by Luby and Paula Steckley is a bilingual book with Anishinaabe Moan and English written and illustrated and translated by Anishinaabe. The question of the book is, how do I know summer? Or how do I know fall? And the answers are those details from the natural world that a child and her grandmother notice. It's a very beautiful book and would be well paired with the book Seasons, which depicts a global variety of six landscapes through cut pages so that as you flip, you see each landscape become transformed into yet another season. Written by Pang and illustrated by Clover Robin, who's from London, the details of land and animal are exactly the kinds of details that children reading on their own or interested in science or in nature will delight in. Little Bird's Day comes from indigenous Australia. Sally Morgan is a West Australian Aboriginal author, as the illustrator is as well. And together they tell a beautiful tale about a little bird who encounters the winds and the clouds and the animals of Australia. The bird is actually a friar bird. And there's a lovely appendix that children should not miss and will enjoy at the end of the book. Almost Nothing Yet Everything is a book about water. It's really a poem and a celebration about how water shines and cascades and overflows. This book is written by Hiroshi Osada. And the Japanese illustrator has done a beautiful job of using blues and greens with two tiny characters that we see from afar. Tiger, Tiger Burning Bright is a big, oversized, gorgeous collection of poetry about animals. It's set up to be a day book with one poem for each day. It's very international and like these others is very beautiful and will keep child readers conscious of the diversity in our natural world. Using children's literature as a bridge to understanding is a fundamental underpinning of USBBY's parent organization, the International Board on Books for Young People. IBBY was founded by Yellow Lippman after the Second World War to promote meaningful cultural connections between young people around the world. Literature remains one of the most fundamental ways that readers are presented with, understand, and eventually negotiate conflict, and our outstanding international books list recognizes and represents that fundamental role. Three of the books I'm discussing today are set during the Second World War. The first of those is The Story of Beaudry by Hetty Freed, a Swedish text illustrated by Stina Wiesen and translated by Linda Schenick. Published by Erdemans, this first-person survivor story shares a typical idyllic childhood full of family, friends, and an outsized pet upended when Hitler's soldiers come to power. After seasons in a horrific camp, Hetty and her little sister Livia return home, and it is Hetty's reunion with Beaudry that convinces her that the war is over. The Swallow's Flight by Hilary McKay, published by McElderry Books, also includes a dog. This one, a scrapyard rescue named Pax. He's part of the intertwined stories of four young people following them from their interwar childhoods in a tale dotted with the Berlin Zoo, airplane mechanics, and personal appeals to Winston Churchill, culminating with Eric's attempt to make an aerial escape from Germany to Canada. McKay's pitch-perfect cadence captures everything from rationing to radio shows, and it's certain to delight Anglophiles of all ages. The third World War II book I'm presenting is When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler from Aladdin, a chapter book also concerned with friends scattered by wartime. Spanning more than a decade, the novel was inspired by Kessler's father's kinder transport experience. This introspective novel alternates points of view while documenting the creeping Nazi influence across Europe. The picture book War by Jose Jorge Letria and Andre Letria from Greystone Kids provides a more abstract view of conflict. Using spare text to achieve an almost wordless narrative, depending on evocative images to depict conflict in an atmospheric, symbolic visual grammar evoking the First World War. Lastly, the surrealistic picture book How the War Changed Rondo by Ramana Ramachayan and Andrea Lesev from Enchanted Lion uses startling illustrations combining a variety of media and styles into something truly inventive. Three 
unconventional characters. Danko the light bulb, Zirka the paper bird, and Fabian a balloon toy have their civilized lives upset when the dark specter of war blots out the sun. The characters harness the power of music and collective action to drive back the darkness. The saga of individual injury, the common cause, and the role of war in cultural memory is applicable to many conflicts. Many of the books on this year's 2022 OIB list fit the theme Youth's Explorations and Identity Building. Today, I'm sharing six of those books. And collectively, these engaging and enriching narratives speak to the personal journeys taken in our quest to understand ourselves, help others see us through asset-oriented eyes, and to offer counter-narratives that help dismantle biases and prejudices. Young readers will enjoy traveling to Lagos, Nigeria in our first book, an early chapter book. There, they will meet Too Small Tola, an engaging character created by Atinike and visually represented by Oninya Iwu. As the youngest and smallest member of her family, Tola engages in everyday activities that help prove to the world that she is strong and mighty despite her small stature. Another traditional reader that is sure to resonate with many young readers is Chicha Sounder's Sona Sharma, Very Best Big Sister, illustrated by Jen Katun. Within this 100 page, eight chapter book, we experience Sona grappling with the idea of shifting from an only child to a big sister and taking this new role as a big sister very seriously when preparing for her new sister's naming ceremony. Thankfully, she has her best friend, Elephant, and her family to help her. Names are such an important part of one's ever-evolving identity, regardless of age. Tao Lam's picture book memoir, Tao, directly addresses the importance of one's name and the detrimental psychological effects when one's name is continually misspelled, misspoken, or when one is asked or feels compelled to change their name to better fit within their current community. Just like Tao when she emigrated to Canada from Vietnam as a young girl. Recognizing one's potential and the potential of others regardless of one's professional and socioeconomic status is at the heart of our next book, Julie Avery and Chris Sasaki's Canadian import, Sakamoto Swim Club, How a Teacher Led an Unlikely Teen to Victory. Told in well-paced rhyming couplets, this historical story details how science teacher Soichi Sakamoto, who himself didn't know how to swim, coached children of sugar plantation workers not only how to swim, but also how to win Olympic gold. This group of individuals known as the Three-Year Swim Club defied personal and societal expectations and transformed themselves and society all along the way. With our final two books, we shift to Rosanna Fung's graphic novel, Living with Viola, and Wab Kanu's suspenseful novel, Walking in Two Worlds. These books delve into self-love and awareness, as well as cultural and transnational identities as the middle and high school characters negotiate anxiety and feelings of belonging or not belonging in mainstream and virtual worlds. Thank you for joining us today to learn about the 2022 Outstanding International Books. We are delighted to provide for you two resources. The first is the USBBY website that has a plethora of information about the organization, but also provides additional resources for OIB lists in 2022 and the previous lists. These include maps, of the geographic location of the 42 books of 2022 and a link to the future school library journal article which features annotations of each of these books that will be coming in february additionally we are providing you a link to the google sheets that is organized by the themes we presented today we hope these resources are useful to you thank you again for being here and happy reading